Welcome to Fully Charged, and more specifically, welcome to Fully Charged live south here at Farnborough Airfield. And even then, more specifically, we are sat in the commercial area of Fully Charged Live. So what better uh, place to take a look at the sort of state of the nation of commercial EVs at the moment. And because I know so little on the subject, I have called upon my friend and uh, commercial expert, Paul Kirby. Paul, how are you? Shall we pretend well, we've, we've, we were just meeting, <laughs> even though we've been here for half an hour chatting? So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I think, new products around here. Yeah. There's also a few people that I would have expected to see that are missing. So, yeah. so how is the, how is the sort of commercial market in the electric world at the moment? So the, the market itself is, um, it, it's still progressing. So we're still seeing a decent amount of electric vans going on the road. Lots of companies adopting them and certainly um, determined to adopt them. I guess the challenge is we're not seeing that same J curve of, of growth that we saw in the car world. And um, there is concerns across industry, both government, companies, and, and as advocates, uh, we're seeing that the van is not accelerating at the same pace. And what can we do? You know, um, you, you've addressed it, you know, not all the manufacturers are here. What is it that we can do to help move that forward? But, you know, a, a plethora of new vehicles here today, um, which is great to see and uh, hopefully the people are getting some interest in those and will be taking away the message that we want people to understand that there are great products on the market available for use. Commercial vehicle requirements are different for everyone and here at the commercial zone at Fully Charged Live we've got the full range of different vans which will hopefully meet your needs. And the examples we've got here are things like the City One, very small, payload of just under 300 kilograms but perfect for those congested inner city locations if you're delivering someone like that. In the medium range things like the ID uh, Buzz and Volkswagens here again larger payload you know better range and then if you want to move right up the top you've got things like the Marcus ED9 again much bigger van much bigger payload much bigger capacity and what's key in the commercial sector is that you get a van that meets your needs you need to look before you go and buy one of these vehicles is decide what it is you've got you're carrying, how big it is, how heavy it is, how far you need to take it, and where you're taking it to. And with that in mind, with that information, you can come to Fully Charged Live, have a look around, and, uh, and find the van that's going to be right for you. So if the, in, in past episodes, we've done roundups of the small, the medium, the large yeah. sort of vans. Is there any specific new models and vehicles that are noteworthy? Yes, absolutely. So we've got front and centre here in the, the commercial vehicle zone uh, the ID Buzz. Now whilst the ID Buzz looks like a big vehicle it's actually considered in the small vehicle segment and that's because of its capabilities. 600 kilos um, payload and four meters cubed it's in that small van sector but looks like a big vehicle and it's certainly got a lot of presence and we are seeing that that vehicle's got the fastest charging available on a van at 170 kilowatt speed which makes a huge difference when you're pulling up um, and wanting to get on and, and you know, get, get going. That's one of the things, and, and I think at the moment we'll address some of the questions that people should be asking if they're looking to, to get commercial vehicles for their businesses. But it's not just about range, which often, often people's kind of, yeah. uh, you know, they focus too much on it. It's also yeah. how fast you charge. Because me personally, I would rather something that would do a, a 200 mile range and charge yeah. in 20 minutes than a yeah. 400 mile range that takes four hours to charge. Uh, exactly that, and I think what, we, what we've got is this balance between payload which is the ability of, of the vehicle to carry, which is reduced at the bigger the battery because the batteries are quite heavy. So you're right, if we can charge a vehicle very quickly and we know that there's technology coming that will make the batteries more dense and the charging more quickly, um, that will make a massive difference to the way people can operate those vehicles. And presumably, although you mentioned that the, 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 the commercial vehicles, as always, are slightly lagging behind the, yeah. the cars, um, from an infrastructure point of view, any infrastructure that's being built and progressed for cars is going to help the vans out because it's the same charging sort of processes. It, it is, but we, when we build the infrastructure, vans need to be considered. We're, we're sitting in the 3TI Papio 3, which is a pop-up charging, um, pop charging station? container station. Yeah, that's the word. Um, and it is designed so that it will fit vans in and you can v charge vans where they're resting. So this is mobile, it can go to wherever it needs to, and you're able to kind of, um, you know, plug in your vehicles in unusual situations. When it comes to commercial vehicles, it's not just about getting the right vehicle, it's about uh, working out what is going to work best for you when it comes to charging. What we're seeing more now is, is greater flexibility within charging in, in the sense of mobile charging. 
And here at Fully Charged Live in the commercial area, we've got the two different ends of the spectrum of mobile charging. And the first off, it's quite the big end. Believe it or not, behind me is actually an example of mobile charging. That setup is a mobile pop-up solar-powered uh, charging base. And then on the other end of the scale is the much more relatively compact and lightweight version, which is this, which is effectively uh, a, a big battery on wheels with some charging cables. So before we go on to the sort of considerations, I do want to talk about the, the Monroe. Yes. Because the Monroe is, is parked up in the commercial area. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks to be a bit more like a, a kind of, I don't know, an electric Land Rover Defender. Yeah, it is. But, but, but is, it, is it still considered a commercial vehicle? So, I mean, whether you classify it as a commercial vehicle from a legislative point of view or a descriptive point of view, you probably wouldn't. You'd say it's a passenger vehicle. But when you look at the Land Rover Defender, that is carrying out an agricultural yeah. purpose, typically, which is commercial, right? So the, the Monroe with, it, with its three and a half ton towing capacity, which is unheard of, almost unheard of in the commercial vehicle world, uh, you know, decent sized battery. I mean, it's it's just a beast and it, it's great looking and it's going to make a difference in the agricultural zone and also for towing of, of large goods and, and things around the country, which have as yet been able to do en masse. So apart from Monroe, is there anything else at the show this weekend that, that has piqued your interest? Well, do you know what? There's there's two or three things, actually. So we've got the E-Deliver 7 Maxus, which is, uh, you know, the first seeing really of that vehicle. The public are crawling over it. Great battery, great range, everything that you'd want. Chinese vehicles are really coming to market. Um, and it's great to see that actually at least a manufacturer is wanting to be here and showing their wares. We've also seen a conversion on the Maxus, which is a wheelchair accessible minibus, which is fantastic news. There's both the minibus and the wheelchair accessible version that will make a difference to schools and colleges and community centres and, and other kinds of operations that are doing that, which is the first time we've really seen that on uh, electric vans, which is fantastic. And then the other thing that I love is a, a group called the, the EV Civil Solutions. Now they're trying to clean up the dirty side of the industry. Now these are the people that put the holes in the ground, that put the, the pedestals and put the chargers in. Okay. So they're digging holes with electric diggers now. They actually have electric diggers. They're, they're, they're flattening down the ground with electric power tools and, and using electric zero emission solutions to deal with that situation of digging the holes and, and finishing off and, and precast concrete as well, meaning that they only go to site once rather than two and three times every time oh. they go. So it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to see. And it's also one of the few exhibits here where the diggers moving and the, the, all the tools are laid out. It's really good. And finally, from a sort of state of the nation point of view, when it comes to commercial EVs, how's the second-hand market developing? Oof. You didn't tell me you were going to ask me that question. Wow. I didn't. That's a surprise <laughs> me. I just thought it's not about why. No, but it's, but do you know what? It is one of the biggest questions that we've got to answer. Because if all we do is focus on these wonderful new vehicles and don't think about how the next buyer is going to use those vehicles, we talk about the total cost of ownership, right? So the total cost of ownership Residual value is critical, so that second value when somebody comes along to buy it. If we haven't educated the market, and if we haven't demonstrated what we need to to give confidence to those second-hand market buyers, then we're going to see the, the backside drop out of the market and the total cost of ownership goes up and we then stall the market even further. It's a challenge at the moment to get the new vehicles out, but the used vehicles are very tricky as well because the resellers of those vehicles aren't used to the electric vehicle market. Yeah. Okay, so you know, part of your work is as a consultant and advisor. Mm. So when it comes to large, small businesses and even, even the sort of sole traders, if someone's considering a commercial EV, what sort of questions should they be asking themselves? Aren't you be asking of the of the, the manufacturers that define the right vehicle for them? So it's a good question again. The um, the reality is you've got to look at your business, I think, with a blank canvas. It isn't always just about replacing that, that ICE vehicle, that internal combustion engine vehicle with an electric vehicle. It is about thinking, how do I de do that job operation? How do I m get my business um, future-proofed? Thinking different ways of doing things. Typically, there are possibilities in every sector to match the electric small vehicle with an electric small vehicle, an electric mid-sized vehicle, an electric mid-sized vehicle. You've still got to make that vehicle fit for purpose. It's got to have the right payload, 
It's got to be able to go far enough in a day's operation. I, whenever I'm talking to companies, I say, look, try and find the vehicle that will fit your whole day's operation so that you can charge overnight where the energy's under your control. You're not waiting at you know public charge points and things like that. So that's where you want to get to. And then in, in the large van sector, you have to consider whether you use the extra dispensation to get extra payload because the batteries are heavier, yeah. you're taking you further, but there is that government dispensation that allows you to maximize the payload and actually give you more payload potentially. So it's about looking at every use case, making sure the job, the, the vehicle's fit for purpose and looking at what other options are out there to do something different. And I think it's a point we've, we've touched on every single sort of episode we've done almost, yeah. is the idea of don't spend more you have to. So people come fixated with range. Yes, yeah. Oh, I need 200 miles range. But actually, you know, the average, my mates are like kitchen fitters and plumbers. Yeah. I'll do maybe 40 miles a day. Yeah. There's no point you buying a vehicle to do 400 miles a day. No. Buy one that'll do 60 miles because yeah. otherwise you're just paying for a, for a, for an asset that you're yeah. never going to use. The batteries are more expensive than um, than we've experienced in the past, and they they're what push the price up of the vehicle. So if you can get the right sizing of the battery to meet the need, you want, always want a bit of a buffer. So you know most most vehicles are are available that give you over 100 miles, but that compromise around payload. So the, the best example of that is in the Stellantis products, the Vivaro, the Peugeot Expert, um, and others like that, where the 50 kilowatt hour battery gives you 1200 kilos payload, the 75 kilo, kilowatt hour battery gives you 1000 kilos payload. What's more important? Um, this charging speed then, as we mentioned, yeah. then comes into it both AC charging, does it give 22, which is the fastest we can get on something like this, um, or at your workplace, or that high speed charging of 100 or plus kilowatts uh, for the public charging. So you're absolutely right. And finally, um, what's the situation now on government grants or, or tax sort of savings for buying uh, commercial EVs? So in terms of um, the grants, we're still seeing that um, the, the government have confirmed the 5,000 pounds on a large van and 2,500 pounds on a smaller van. Um, till the tax year 24-25. So April 25, we'll still see that. In recent conversation, OZEV have confirmed that they're considering extending that and possibly even increasing it. So there is recognition that this market is tricky at the minute and that the government needs to continue to support it, and they are, it seems. There is tax benefits as well. Um, and, you know, see your tax advisor for the best yeah. way to uh, buy those vehicles. Fantastic. So if you want to take a look at some of our previous uh, van roundups and episodes on specific models, check the links below. Other than that, as always, if you have been, thanks for watching and thank you, Paul. My pleasure.